Moving into our second episode of Brand Review, today we're looking at Chinatown Market, now known as Market. Last episode we looked at American Apparel. Jack, this one's going to be absolutely epic. It is, yes. And what better way to start the episode and dive into Chinatown Market than talking about the face of the brand, who started it, Mike Sherman himself. If you're not familiar with Mike Sherman, Strap yourselves in because he's got a pretty incredible story. Yeah, one of the best resumes I've read. In, we're talking assistant designer at Nike for two years, the logo creator for Kith, yep. ASAP Worldwide. List goes on and on and on, I promise. This guy has the most de- one of the most decorated careers in this industry. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, for people in the streetwear industry, this guy is streetwear. Like he breathes it. He's breathed it for, you know, since he was... A teenager, he got so much so that he actually got expelled from his high school for selling t-shirts out the back of his car. Yeah, it's something you expelled. Read. Yeah, <laughs> expelled. See you later. <laughs> something I think he's wasn't he nicknamed Mikey Merchandise. Mikey Merchandise <laughs> was his nickname in <laughs> high school. Yeah, he got the Mikey Merchandise got the boot. Um, <laughs> it's just yeah, it's something out of like a folklore book. Really, this guy's story expelled and then you know straight into working with brands like nike i yep. think just before he got the job at nike he worked at he worked at goodwood new york city which is like a wooden jewelry brand and there he was they were doing work with you know some of the biggest influences some of the biggest uh rappers and from there he met asap rocky's manager who in some shape or form kind of took on a mentor uh approach for mike uh, became Mike's mentor and kind of opened up this door into Nike and where, where Mike worked for a couple of years. Yeah, so worked with ASAP on his album covers. Yep, building up did this, some merchandise design, that kind of thing. That's it. And through this process, he's just building up incredible networks. He's super young. I think from there, he also moved. So yeah, he was with Nike and working very closely with Ronnie Feig at yep. Kith. Mm-hmm. Um, so much so that he built all those logos that we see today plastered around everywhere. So he's literally the mastermind behind some of, if not like all of streetwear in a way. Yeah, very much entrenched in the New York culture of fashion and streetwear. So much so that, you know, if, if you know Jeff Staple, um, he started Staples, the, the brand. Jeff Staples is an icon in New York City streetwear. And so Mike was very keen to try and approach Jeff and get a job. And being Mike, he does things differently and he's a hustler. So what did he do? He actually studied Jeff Jeff Staple, where he lived, how he got to work, the route that he took, <laughs> and he go he went and got made like all these posters of I think it had you know something about a ultimately like a, his resume of like <laughs> hire me Jeff Staple <laughs> and just went and posted them on Jeff Staple's walking route to work uh, and actually he actually got arrested for graffiti in the end <laughs> because of that but he did get a meeting with Jeff Staple so. That, that tells you a little bit about the character and about the hustle of, of Mike Sherman. That's all you need to know, really. And, and you fast forward that into his next brand he started was ICMY. Yep. And what happened there is he's obviously hustling around on his bike, skateboard all around New York, and he got T-boned a few times, cleaned up off the bike, and he realized, like, I've got to design clothes with reflective um, marks on them. So he that's literally how he started the brand. But he brought on a massive investor yep. and he was young at the time. This is about 10, 15 years ago and he just signed a really crappy contract. Mm. So much so within about four years, he actually got let go of from his own brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's funny hearing him talking about that email that he received. Like, oh, you, you've been made redundant from your own business. And he's like, right. Like, the, the crazy thing about Mike is I think a lot of people at that point would fold over and be like, this is too hard. You know, like I started a brand of my dreams, ICMY, I believe was really taken off in New York. And he, he didn't let that stop him though, because I mean, he moved into what we know today as market. Yeah. And that started as Chinatown market. Um, some very funny beginnings back to the roots being in Brooklyn and New York city. They started with, you know, basically bootleg t-shirts, uh, a well-known one was "fuck you, you fucking fuck," uh, po- posted on a t-shirt. You gotta say that in, with a New York accent. Uh, Jack. I, I don't have a good idea. You, you, you said so. that like this, like really conservative parent. You're like "fuck 
You, you fucking fuck. All right, well, you give us a New York accent. All right, I'll give you a New York accent. It's like, fuck you, you fucking fuck. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, that's I've, pretty good. I've been on yeah. Canal Street a few times. I've heard, <laughs> I've definitely heard people say that. It's just where that on Canal Street, where Chinatown is in New York, is just like all the I love New York teas. It's all like, you know, the Statue of Liberty, little key chains, all of that. Yeah, it's that nostalgia, pop culture. Full on. Yeah. So he just immersed himself within that yep. and made that tea. He also went to Complex Con. I think that's where he really got the brand up and running. Yeah, he took out a, a loan um, or went into credit card debt of, I think, about $30,000 and got a stall at Complex Con. And he sold $15,000 on the first day and $15,000 worth of gums on the second day. So it just goes to show, you know, he was betting big and taking big risks, but they, they paid off for him, which, um, you know, allowed him to continue what is Chinatown market. And he did uh, some more bootleg t-shirts along the way. He did another uh, Frank Ocean uh, t-shirt with a Nike swoosh. That's right. It. That's right. Just after Frank Ocean dropped the his song Nikes. And he did $50,000 of revenue in 24 hours yeah. doing that t-shirt. Yeah. To then to then get <laughs> sued by Frank Ocean, uh, and he had to actually re- like return all those orders. So he, he's been through it. Yeah, it's I'm a sure. big it's a big refund. It's, yeah. Uh, the crazy thing that I want to just backtrack on for a second is when you think Chinatown Market, you know, you've looked at that 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 what's that gun called again? That digital it's like gun. That print gun. Yeah. Yeah. That crazy print gun. Obviously, DTG screen print embroidered like. That they're just known to have that shit like down pat, right? Mm. And what I loved was hearing at his time at Nike, I believe they're like the Bowery, Nike Bowery Center, um, this establishment and initiative, sorry, that Nike created it back in those, I think this was like 2012. So this is like Kanye still at Nike. I think Amari Stadamai was coming through to the thing. It was like this big cultural hub, mm-hmm. obviously just probably private. And uh, Mikey Sherman was the guy in the basement bringing those designs to life. So if Kanye's like, I want this, he'd be in the basement screen printing it and making it all happen. And that actually, the Bowery Centre that Nike created, I think went under or they shifted on it. They didn't like it anymore. So Mikey purchased all their equipment at like bargain basement prices. Yeah. Like read between lines, probably just stole half of it and started Chinatown Market. So I just love... This brand is like literally the bootleg from like being sued to like getting expelled. Like this is, it's a fictional story. Like yeah, it couldn't yeah. be any more aligned with like what he's done. Yeah, it's amazing. And I, it goes to show, you know, just how far you can go with so little. And Mikey's story is very much, um, you know, go and get it yourself. And he, he's come up with all these skills himself. He's put the 10,000 hours in. He knows how to use all these machines better than anyone else because he's done it for years and years and years. And and that's, you know, become this bigger thing as, as market is today. And, and they still rely heavily on that stuff. And that's what separates their brand from others, which is really cool that that was instilled from Mike, you know, when he was coming up as a teenager. Yeah, I think what I take from that, Jack, is where market is such a, and it sounds a bit, cringy slash cliche is like such a beast of a brand is it's so entrenched in the culture of the internet but that's all well and good there's a million brands like that but there's only few brands that have that and also have the expertise of all those equipments Mm. that he's literally a master of yeah well let's let's talk about where market is today then because i think that's that's just going to show you know the the journey and the growth that they've been on since uh, they're only founded in 2016 yeah, so it's talking about seven years. Pretty recent, pretty yeah. recent. They exploded through COVID. Yeah. You know, I think they've like doubled their following in the last two years. And so they nearly had a million Instagram followers. They just smash it. I think they have, what, what I love about them is the transparency. So like everyone in their business just seems to like pop up on their social media. Waleed is who you Waleed. Yeah. Waleed's like the. He's the head of content. That's yeah. Wow, I can tell he's yeah. the, the head of the head. He's just yeah. The faces. That's the who you would see most of the time on their socials. Um, because I, I actually you know not actually knowing what Mike Sherman looked like. I actually thought, thought was that was Mike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the mistake. <laughs> no, Mike's smart enough to know to take the back seat. Yeah. And screen print. Nah, he does just, it well. Yeah, I mean, Wally does an incredible job, and I, I love how. The pace is the number one thing. Yeah, it's quick. They've turned around T-shirts, I believe, in an hour of having the idea in a room. Yeah. I think there was this Ant T-shirt they did a few years ago. I'm going to be a bit scratchy on this, but there was some joke they ran about an Ant, and they were selling that T-shirt like in the same day. Yeah. Hundred, like thousands of units probably. Yeah, that's one of their biggest strengths, and the way that they're set up, 
the so they've got a twelve thousand square foot warehouse. Huge. And they have all the equipment and material they need in there to make a garment from scratch. So take us through the whole process. So they can have an idea at seven AM one morning and that's live on the website that afternoon and shipped out the next morning. I love what they do as well with creators, bringing them into that space. As you said, they have all that material on hand. So they'll bring in Amwa from Carrots, Sean with a spoon, and they'll just start banging out like these little custom pieces. Custom pieces. Mm. So they've never left they've never left that DIY like get gritty with it. Yep. Not gritty, but like get gritty. I definitely said gritty. Um <laughs> uh, screwed that up. But yeah, I think just ne- never letting go of like the origins of your brand is so critical, especially when you grow and have, you know, when you're stocked at some of the, like the biggest retailers in the world, it's so easy to lose your DNA, but they, they, just, they just never do. Yeah. It's also cool that they're very accessible. I think, you know, obviously in streetwear, exclusivity is a big thing and sell out culture and locking, you know, your website and not much stock coming in, all that kind of thing. And they kind of flip that and do the opposite. Yeah, I, I would... I agree to an extent they have the perfect balance that you can't purchase, you know, their dance Robin tees, their Rolling Stones collaborations. Like there's a lot of things they've done in the past. Like things they, definitely get sold out. Don't get me wrong. That they don't re-release, but then they have a nice flow of like things that you can purchase. Mm. So it's mm-hmm. just a nice balance, I think. And then they're obviously stocked at a shitload of retailers. Yeah. That's kind of more to my point. They're stocked at a lot of major retailers. So they are, they're accessible to the masses as well. Yeah. I can't doubt that. Um, yeah. So uh, it's incredible. I mean, what Mike's built, off his own back as well and through all these uh, trials and tribulations is is really cool and I guess you had a quote that of Mike's that you really resonated with you yeah I, I I'll pull it up real quick there's a, it's a great line for any and I don't like the word entrepreneur but you know anyone that's on their own trying to come up with an idea you know in this industry or any industry creatively and he said you have to believe in yourself before anyone else will and it's something you've probably heard before but it's just such a lonely place to be when you start, you know, and like when you've got these big thoughts and, you know, no one around you is going to buy into those more or less. So I love that. And if there's anything I take from Mikey, I think it's three things and it's very New York. It's, it's hustle. You know, it's, it's it just keep running headfirst into every day and watch what comes from that. It's moving quick too. So obviously you're running, you've got to be moving fast um, you look at their social media, it's, it's stories every day, posts every day. They could drop a t-shirt in any minute. So everyone's on their toes. And then it's the culture. They're always tapped in. And, you know, you look at the way they've set up their team, fully vertically integrated. They've got an incredible finger on the pulse with what's going on in society. So much so that they start a lot of the trends now themselves. So those three things, hustle, pace, and culture. If you do those three in this day and age of internet and tiktok and all that crap you're going to be pretty close to making a lot a lot of sales for sure yep well guys thank you for tuning in again um we're calling these brand reviews but that sounds a bit stale to us so if you guys can help us come up with maybe a better suited name something short something sharp but maybe a little bit less stale than brand reviews and if you're feeling really good about yourself and you've listened to this whole episode guys a five-star review or a follow of the podcast it would mean the absolute world to us. Helps done push. In a while. I know we don't. People got mad that we did these. Now we're back doing them. So <laughs> fuck you, you fucking fuck. Leave a five star review. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.